Good evening, everyone. This is Gary Bennett. Welcome to Objective C for Absolute Beginners. Tonight, we're going to be going over um, the next in our series of uh, videos. This one's going to be how to use Xcode to make a simple application. And then our next video will take that simple application and we'll extend it from our Alice application with doing our Hello World, but we'll have some. Um, some guessing, some game guessing involved in it, some logic in order to pick, uh, to uh, to display if they've chosen, the user has to chosen the correct number or not. So tonight we're just going to start out, uh, kind of take a quick tour of Xcode, making our first project, how to use the debugger, some of the settings in uh, preferences in Xcode, and, um, and running our application. I will be using Xcode 3.2.5. Xcode 4 is in beta right now. Um, nothing should change as far as the um, overall uh, project settings, uh, but the, the user interface for Xcode 4 is, um, is a little bit different. It's changed, um, but the file projects are, um, you can open an Xcode 4 project in Xcode 3.2.5 and vice versa. So the settings are all the same and nothing will change. The reason I'm not displaying Xcode 4 for you tonight is because it's still in beta which means um, all the developers are still under an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, and um, can't, can't show it. But if you are in the, um, if you belong to the uh, developer program and you've paid your $99, you can go ahead and download it and check it out for yourself. Let me get the link up real quick. And let me log in. And after you've logged in, you can go ahead and make sure you click on the beta tab. Um, and uh, as opposed to the, the first tab, which is usually the gold master or production release, scroll down and you can get um, Xcode 4. Point, uh, Xcode uh, release preview 3. Um, do make sure you follow the instructions because there's some things you got to have installed uh, before you do it and to get it run with your um, with your app including having the pre-release version of Snow Leopard alright so let's go ahead and um, open up Xcode and we're going to make a new project we'll say file new project and this is just going to be a simple Objective-C application we're not going to use any of the iPhone or iOS um, project settings. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to pick, um, I think we're going to pick an application that is a command line tool, meaning that it just basically runs from the, um, um, the command line, uh, the shell. And we're going to say that it follows, uh, it uses the foundation library. And we'll choose choose. We'll just call ours test. Uh, you know what? We'll call it Hello World. Their traditional first app for developers. All right. So we got our project open. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Sorry about that. Make it a little bit bigger. And if you want to change your fonts so that um, you know, you may want them smaller or bigger. Let me pick a file here. Um, you can just go to your preferences and uh, choose fonts. And I have a font here already set. It's under Gary settings, so you can see it. And then also another setting that I like to have is is so that when I run the application, the console or the shell kind of comes up automatically, so I can see what output my application has produced. To turn that on by default, go to Xcode Preferences, and I want to go, I think it's debugging, and say Show Console on Start. It's not there by default. So anyway, so let's go ahead and um, apply that, hit OK. And let's just go ahead and make sure we got it set for debug. So our application has all the debugging symbols built into it so we can set breakpoints and look at variables, etc. All right, and the name of the application is going to be Hello World. Let's do a build and run. And I 
ran the application, the console came up for us automatically and displayed the output of our application, which we'll talk about here shortly. All right, so if you happen to lose it, um, and um, you can just go ahead and um, rerun the application again, and the console will go ahead and pop up for you. All right. So here we have our application. We are importing the foundation um, header uh, implementation file or the library. And uh, the header file contains um, the definition the, of the interface that we're using. In this case, we're accessing NS auto release pool object. And we'll talk more about what the auto release pool does in our later videos and, and with our memory. And so this is going to allocate the memory that our application is going to run in. And then at the end, we're going to release that memory. And then in the middle is what our application is going to do. And by default, um, our application will log to the console. And that's what NSLog does. Um, it will log to the console our text that we want to say. So hello world. All right. I'll go ahead and save and I'll do a build and go and you can see I just simply hit the um, command S which does the save and then you can do a build and run and look at our output and there it is it says what we want it to say you can do things to set breakpoints by clicking in the gutter where you want your application to stop so you can kind of step through the code and debug it you can do that when the de you're in the debugger. Um, I'm sorry, when you're in the debug um, settings for your output. So we'll go ahead and rerun the application, and this time we're going to hit our breakpoint. And I have the gutter turned on, and you can do that in preferences as well. Uh, just a second here. It's one of these guys. It might be text editing. Yeah, here we go. Text editing. Show show line numbers. Show gutter. And then you just sit in there, hit your breakpoint. I just hit my breakpoint, and I can go ahead and examine um, what my variables look like. So let's say, for example, I had something like this going on. Int x is equal to 1, x is equal to x plus 5, and we'll go ahead and rerun it. Actually, I want to set a breakpoint here on line number seven and do a build and run. All right, so I hit my breakpoint. If I hover my mouse over it, I can see right now X has some random number. That's because X hasn't been initialized yet. All right, so if I step over the line of code, I can see that X has now been initialized and contains the value one. And this means step over the line of code. This means step into a method or function call. We'll talk about how to do it. This means step out. And this basically means let it rip. Run the program till it hits another breakpoint or the application ends or crashes. OK. So let's go ahead and um, continue stepping through the application. And right now x is equal to 1, we'll say step over. Now we do x is equal to x plus 5. 1 plus 5 is 6, that's what x now contains. And um, we now continue the execution. We can go ahead and let it rip, and our application is complete. All right, um, so this is kind of just a quick um, introduction to how to compile an application, maybe change it, print it to the console, and also we want to talk about debugging. Um, one of the things is that when we compile our application doing a build or build and debug, build will go ahead and compile it till we get a .app file that our Mac or iPhone can run. Um, build and debug means it will create the .app and then also run the application, which is what I've been doing. 
you can see I have not done the build yet, but as soon as I got rid of that semicolon, I get um, a uh, an error. Well, that is because if I look at my settings here, okay, we can go ahead and set that to use the new LLVM compiler, which is out. And it's kind of a cool little guy here because it gives us a little bit better um, debugging um, information as well as performance in our application. Uh, Apple, I believe, maintains that it's uh, you can get a 20% speed in performance just using the new LLVM compiler. You also get a little bit better debugging information when the application doesn't compile. You can see it says I'm missing a semicolon, and before it was pointing on this line here that the the error was, and which means I got to look up here and say, okay, it was it semicolon was probably missing on the line above. But um, with the LLVM compiler, you see that little caret right above my I beam there. Hopefully you can see, hey, there's something there that's wrong. And here's probably what it is. It's missing the semicolon right there. So it's kind of cool there with the LLVM compiler what it, um, what it can do for you. Let's see here. x is equal to xy plus 6. Okay. Well, um, also, you can see now I have a variable that the compiler probably is not going to like. So if I do a build and run, the application is not going to build because I have an error. You can see it right here. I can click on that and it will take me to it. Or I can just look if I'm in that file. I can just look here. And if this was a multiple line um, file, I'd have little red dash uh, marks or multiple page file. I'd have multiple dash marks here that I could click and take me to the errors as well. Well here it's saying uh, uh, use of undeclared identifier. I can go ahead and click on it and maybe uh, look at a little bit more inside of the, uh, the mini debugger or I can just fix it right here. I get a little carrot guy telling me this is the area that it probably is wrong at. See that little yellow, little yellow carrot? Very small. Go ahead and fix that. As soon as I did that, the carrot went away. It kind of compiles it behind the scenes from an editing standpoint, but I still got to run and compile it. And voila, it should um, hit our breakpoint and run to execution. Okay, so tonight we talked about building our first application, making it, um, the debugger, the compiler, and uh, our next video, which we'll have next week, which will be available on YouTube as well will um, walk us through our Alice application that we made in Alice that allows us to guess a number and the application tells us if we're right, if we're too high or too low. Again, this is Gary Bennett uh, from Excel Me. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you. Swing by my website if you have any questions or our online forum or training center um, where you can take a look at the different chapters of the book where these projects are uh, talked about in much more detail or my courses. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for joining us. Good night.